I got this from my buddy Mike. What's up? See? And I didn't, I don't know if I've showed you the rest of this, but oh my God, trying to get this thing apart. Uh, Mac makes some really incredible stuff, but the, the it, you've got to be a rocket scientist, literally, to, to, to deal with this stuff. Let me poke in a little deeper. We're going to clean this. Just look at that. You should have seen how dirty this was. It's got about 125 pounds. Uh, one of the things I see is this one of these poles is jammed. We'll get a better look at that. I have another one though, I think, from another motor. Another motor. Uh, we don't know what's going on in here. I think it'd be better if we just get it cleaned up and maybe I can see it. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've pressure washed just to get this far. The rest of the junk is in here. It had a rusted bar and chain, but I may have another one. There's some backup parts in here, which is a similar saw. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, now maybe I can see in here a little bit better. Now we have to disconnect the carburetor and the throttle. And there might be a Z-clip or something in here. You know, you would think that they would make it easy. You know, there's a switch as well. Alright, let me see. It's clean, or a cleaner. Sure, I'll clean it again. Interesting carburetor, huh? I don't know. I think I know where this went. See, that's the thing. I don't know what. My concern, I think this went here. This piece, this hose. So we're going to want to replace these hoses. And this is like an adapter for the fuel tank. Fuel tank sh goes into that. This thing here. Hopefully you can see it. And I think the magneto is dead. So. This is the ground for it over here. So it shouldn't be grounded now. So what we can do is we can bench test it. And this broken piece here, we should be able to knock it forward. But if you look, I don't know how that got on that side. But I have another one. Yeah, that other saw that I showed you, I measured this. Yeah, they're the same. So we may want to take this off. But I think we should test the magneto first. It's getting, it was a lot cleaner now in there. Um, I can see inside. No, doggy, you can't hang out by me like that. He's scared because this fireworks. He's going to bang in the camera in a minute. You can see. He's trying not to. Spin it and shoot some of the water out. Yeah. No problem. Get a little ragamundo on that. Now, that's what I say. We want to test the spark. Get a little more liquid in there. Anything to loosen up all the junk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to want to do that a few times before we're done. What do you see? Look at that puke. It just hurled. Want to get all that out. That, well, first of all, it's bad for the engine, as you guys know, but it will dilute the charge. It'll keep puking forward. You'll never get it started. I can see the, the coil part in there. Oh, well, that would explain it. Why? You saw that, right? Okay. We're going to change out the coil. All right. So I'm going to pull the coil out of the other machine. It's not in the wrong spot. They get stuck. Remember I always tell you guys, lube them. Yep. Now we're going to steal Mr. Coil. Oh, I'm getting dirt all over my dog. Yeah, see, it got crimped. We may have to look to see if we have another coil. I don't think we have another coil just like that, but it is a little different. Yeah, it is a little different. We're going to look to see. It kind of fits. Let's see. If not, we can put a new end on it. And this, I'll show you what I mean. See? Let's get some lubricant on it. Especially now that we're getting it cleaned up. That's why it wasn't working. It's jammed. There's probably junk and rust and yuck. 
Now sometimes you can free them up, but it's got a long way to go before it gets freed. But we do have another one of these, so one thing at a time. Let's see if we have a coil. We have to we have to modify a coil. All right, I'll be back in a minute. We'll look. Soon after. Okay, so a couple of options are. This is what I found on this coil. Now we'll check the coil, but I think we could put the boot on, and we could just about make it. It might be just long enough. That's a newer coil too. I still have to check it. The older one, we may be able to pull some wire off of it and get that a boot on that too. But we'll clean these things up next. Um, try to take the carb off and the gasket looks like it's okay. There's a bunch of these they're like insulators so they all have to go back. It's two insulators went in here the screw that went here had a little insulator underneath it one of the, I didn't notice it, but one of these gets an insulator and I think I know which one so I think it's a good time to maybe Let's clean this off one more time. I put a plug here. Let's give this another bath. Let's get all the junk out of the way. And we're going to run some, some cleaner inside again. It's going to have to keep you know, cleaning it until it's, until it's clean enough to where we can start assembling it. Because that's basically what's going to happen once we get it clean. And if this doesn't, if this one doesn't loosen up, then we'll replace it with the other one. But it might. You, you see more when you clean it. You just, you see more of it. I don't know what that is yet, but there's no porting or anything. I cleaned it out. She's looking good. I think tomorrow we're going to take this off. I'm done for tonight. It's late. But we'll take this off. Because if this doesn't freshen up, which it doesn't seem like it's going to, since we have another one on a bork saw, Let's take it. Carb goes on first. So we have to get this cleaned up. You know, we, we don't know what's going on with the carb. Wanna take a quick peek? You know, this thing could be a total waste because these are very different parts than what I'm used to. You know, we could just take a peek in here and see if the sandwich that is rebuildable. I mean it, it might be. So this is a very esoteric saw, but I like it. it. It's perfect for like pruning around a house and cutting four bys and stuff. And I have one already. I have the Craftsman, which I don't know if I put up yet. But I kind of like this one. It has a yellow carrying case. It's a little midget saw. And this is for me. I mean, really, this is my little afternoon, night hobby. Yeah, well, this doesn't look too bad, guys. That's pretty decent. There's dirt in it. Okay, we can let that soak a little bit. Yeah, best way to let it soak for overnight is in the two-stroke with the tranny. And just leave it. And there's this, and there's probably one more diaphragm here. Yep. And that doesn't look bad. Okay. And as long as the port's on the carb, okay, we put a little bit of two-stroke two with the tranny on it. Leave that set. I think it's. I think this is definitely worth trying to figure out. It'd be fun. It's complicated. It might work out really good. It's got at least 125 pounds, so it might even have more once we wake it up. It's pretty neat. I think it's a worthy project. It was such a mess. I wasn't planning on doing a video on it. Alright, we'll be back. Flywheel off. I got the other one off. It's on there pretty good. Turn it down to the lowest setting to start off with. Ah. Yep, that did it. Because it's torsional force. You know, real rotational force, not angular. Now, I'm going to try driving it down, low pressure, and holding on to it. And the weight might work. Let's just drive down. See? That's why I was holding on to it. All right, so that's how it goes, guys. Let me pick up the stuff, and we'll clean up the other one and get it on. Now, where'd that thing go? Oh, it fell in the garbage. So this is the older one. 
So that's one way to get these off. This is the one that's stuck. This one works, but that one's not. All right. Let's, let's get back to basics. So I got the muffler off on this side. All right. So we want to start off with really getting this cleaned up. You know, this is the final wash. I, th I think I had said that I was going to be doing this a few times. I want to get at what's in here because this I can guarantee you this junk in there. Now we could take it apart, but then you're going to have to reseat it. Yeah, that's cleaning up good. I think it's some kind of a mount. Oh, a lot of junk came out, and there's some stuff stuck in there. I can feel it. Yeah, it, it was nasty in there. All right, let me let me just rinse this off. We'll blow. We put a little bit of the two-stroke with the tranny fluid in. Roll it. Because this is clean. It's got lubricant. Put some on this side. Okay, we'll just turn it upside down for a few minutes. I'm going to put the muffler back on. I clean that. And I'll be back in a minute. We'll, we'll keep moving forward. I got the flywheel nice and clean. All right. So we're ready for the flywheel as well. Start putting some of it back together. Later that same evening. All right, so I put a little anti-seize on all the bolts. So this is back in. This is just laying on here for now because the carburetor has to go on before we get to do the armature. So let's take a look and see what we have here. All right, so this I let it soak overnight. It looks pretty good right it's pretty flexible I just wiped it down last night I think I showed you and then I put my two-stroke with the tranny fluid on it and we're just gonna see if we can peel it up and what we'll do is we'll put a little bit more on for the reveal if we have to take it up this is just a bigger version of what you usually see for the diaphragms okay? And there's a little thing in there. That's your baffle. Okay, isn't that cool? That's totally different. The diaphragm's in good shape. All right, we'll clean it like that. Uh oh. Wait, hold on. This just came off, and we want to kind of keep it on there because. I don't remember exactly how it goes, so we're just going to try to keep it on there. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to rinse this in our two stroke with the tranny, and just take a tissue and lightly blot it. There's some schmutz on this that's just junk. We're going to wipe that in a little bit. All right, there's your idle adjustment screw. We need to take those out. So on the high, what do we get? One. It's a little over one on the high. Just a little over one. Now we don't know if somebody screwed with it, but it's one and a quarter. So they're both about one and a quarter. This is the low. We're going to use brake cleaner because it's not as bad as. Whoa, that's. I'm just going to very carefully should probably zoom you out a little bit more with one of these brushes, light brush I got a lot of the junk off we're going to start off with this, just to brush the junk out of the way okay. it's all off the gasket blow a little bit of uh, brake clean down it couple of spots depress the um, seat needle and seat go into here okay it's all there is to this all right just blot it again and blow low pressure air last time now this diaphragm is a little different and again I'm going to use my degreaser because it's, it's an oily oil base so we're looking at it in this direction 
I'm gonna lift it up careful because it's been I let it soak. That looks good. All right? You just put that down. I'm just gonna rinse it and blot it. This stuff is mostly gasoline with some oils in it and junk. There's a little bit of junk over here, so we're gonna take a little bit of brake cleaner. See, there's a little bit of debris there, and I'm using one of these. Okay, really gentle. Yeah, that's clean. All right, rinse it. Let me go get a little paper towel. Yeah, that's good. And when I go to put it down, I'll use my two stroke, it's in good shape. Now this guy, which there's not much to this. There's a screen up here. Probably a vent. Just gonna frisk it with the brush and I'm gonna just blow my off camera probably. Looks good. I see some junk in here. So what we can do is we can take that out. Let me go get a tool for that. I'm going to take that out. I see some junk in there. A few moments later. Let's see. There's junk. I get the pick. Okay. Ready? There's junk in there. And there's junk underneath it too. And then there's all this junk in here. See it? See it in there? Oh yeah. Because this will come back and get sucked in. Alright, we're done. Let's put it back. Put that over there. Now we got this guy. Let's put this away. This away! Just using the nylon brush which I shorten the, the bristles. We have a couple of things we have to put on. So this goes first. And this is, is a little hole that this goes in. So real ginger. Again with ginger. believe it went this way should be able to line up the holes there's a screw hole there hard to tell which way it goes okay so that goes down first then you sandwich Okay, so that side's got to go down first, and there's these little locator tits. Did I say tits? That's sexist. Yeah, that's me. And then that goes down. Then the flapper has to cover the valves. Oh, there's a little bit of so like a little bit of junk in the corners. And, and through that hole. It's just a little bit of debris. Yeah, you don't want to damage it. But you're going to want to get that out. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's not much. Okay, that's better. Just ginger. Hi, ginger. What's a ginger? I don't know what's with her. So, the flapper should go, I'm guessing, up against. So, this should go up against the machine part. Yeah, see? That's how it goes. Alright, so, I'm going to put a little bit on you. 
right so this goes down goes this way and that guy goes this way it, it can only go one way it seems this this they're really smart and then tomorrow I'll mount the carb because uh, it kind of goes underneath the flywheel and then I'll mount the flywheel and then we'll figure out what to do with the armature and after the armature and we test for spark if she has spark then I can start figuring out how to put it back together again and clean the, I'll clean the fuel tank okay a little bit at a time okay so itchy and wet all day that's what she said I gotta clean the jets but we'll do that tomorrow looks good okay we're getting there so far it looks good so that's why I don't want to screw up because I'm tired so did I just say that all right guys we'll be back in a little bit the next day I came up with it looks like this coil is good and I, I often save from old coils and stuff I save the ends and this is what you want okay because after we mount the coil we're gonna put this on and it goes in there and I think that's what's missing because you can see the hole all right that's how you want to mount that so the carb is on all right this is almost on we're just gonna blast it down that's it okay and what's nice these are good for some things they really are it's, it's lightweight uh, so now this this is clean so these are like these insulators so just put them down we got the feeler gauge in there it's loose let the maggots suck it in and we'll just tighten it okay nice and even now we can finish tightening the carb down yeah let's get that nice and tight now it doesn't loosen up on us Now we can cinch the rest of the carb down the rest of the way. That's it. Done. Okay. I'll just clean up a plug. It's one of them little guys. I put a little anti-sneeze on it. All right, so you can see how it wants to go. Now this, I think, comes this way. Uh, but I'm not sure. So we're going to leave that. Now let's get our fuel gauge back. Okay. And she's going in this direction. So it looks like we already have a little hole. Yep. So we're just going to push it down through that hole. It doesn't require much. And then you got to lube it. You two stroke with the tranny fluid. It's perfect. To get it nice and lubed up. And we're just going to push it on. And that's all there is to it. Okay. We do this a little bit just to make sure it's it's in all right and so you just now you're not going to be taking the plug on and off that often if the boot is tight enough it'll be fine now this is going to come back off because it's going to get in the way all right and so there you have it guys so we have the motor basically ready all right carb is done uh this i got this i believe in now in the right position these are pretty much lubed up. We're going to a little bit more lube on the springs and on the shafts, and we're going to follow up with a drop of regular motor oil All right before we close it up. And now I'm going to go find out what's going on with the fuel tank, and it's pretty well cleaned up. These are special connectors. So we're not going to mess with these. But that might be a filter, probably old fuel, and this is the oil. So, we don't have to clean it. Well, we should clean out the oil. Yeah, that's the oiler. And we'll dump that. Super thick. So, I don't see any junk in there. It's just real thick. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put some clean motor oil in it to get it washed out. It's actually pretty clean. Just a little bit of debris in it. Yeah, a little bit of debris in, in that filter. I don't know how far that filter goes. We don't want to uh, 
don't want to cause any problems with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little fresh gas in that and just slosh it around, redump it, check for junk. And we're going to blow it through. We need to do a spark check. Oh, I got crap in my mouth. Hopefully it sparks. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. Hey. All right, we're good. Now we can continue with the assembly. Yay! All right, ladies and gentle beans. Let's keep moving forward. Let's get this sticker stuck back on real fast. While it's clean. Let's load it up with contact cement. You know, we're not going to be able to make it perfect, but we'll cover it. Now this is, this is the fitting that, like this is the original hose, which is probably okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. We may still have to use it. I put a new one on. We may have to use the original hose. And the reason, for obvious reasons, now this goes in here. And it kind of just pushes in. And so it gets held into place over here. So we're going to put a little bit of a uh, two-stroke on it. We could take it back out. It goes in this direction. So we're going to snap it back in. Should be cleaning up over there. Okay. And then it comes up and around to the correct length a little bit more probably won't hurt it um, but it could because it can get jammed real quick now the motor has to slide in yeah I know right it has to come this way it kind of loops around this way yeah I got it now there's enough excess yeah it you just, you have to think like, I don't know, like a rocket scientist. Or, I don't know, I don't know what a rocket scientist does. I just play one on TV. So the carbs on this side, as you know, and we may be able to see, yeah, I think we can kind of slide it in like this. Get the hose on. Then that, this comes forward, a little linkage, and then you got to try to clear everything. Now, we don't know if we're going to kink the hose, but the nice thing about that particular hose is, is it's, it's stiff but yet flexible. You know, it's not going to just bend and kink. The other one was starting to kink and uh, cut off. We got to get that linkage hooked up before we do anything else because if it's not right, there we go. There we go. I should be able to just push it down. And I don't know if you can see a lot of that. There's that black linkage in there. Now we should be able to just push it down with a pair of pliers. You'll notice or something. I think it just snaps. Let me figure it out. Yeah. Pretty much just goes down. It's not going to go anywhere. That's it. Almost it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to start putting some screws in. Not sure what goes where, I don't remember, but we need to get. We're not going to make them tight. Because um, I know a lot of it has to be put back I don't know what goes where so I'm gonna guess as to what kind of goes when and where why so we're just gonna start filling some holes and seeing trying to get an idea you know by holding it in place that way I can start the assembly and I'm not gonna you know lose it as it were, because stuff is falling out. 
put some anti-sneeze on everything. You know, steel and aluminum. All right, so that's at least held in. If it's lined up. It's one that goes in there. I'm going to bet it's like something like that. I'll just try to fill up the holes. Now I, I'm willing to bet that this nothing nothing else goes in here because because this is not the stuff that it connects to. You know, let's see what I mean. This just goes up through there, so we're just going to put a little little bit of that on it, and we already have some lubricant elsewhere. So we need to make sure it kind of slides in to that guy and I'm guessing yeah it looks like it just slides in and then this guy I think you slide up into there to put a little bit more yep Yeah, that pretty much does that. That's it. It's down. Now there's a screw that goes there, but I don't know what yet. Probably working. I think this was able to flop down like that, but I don't know. I don't remember. Something like this. And then this came over and it went to something over here. Okay, so it's a, definitely a screw that goes there. Now, it could be a really long one, or it could just be this one. And there's one down here. And again, I would have thought it would have been, I don't think it's going to be a long one. Oh, it does, this might be a long one because it's got to go through something else. So let's find out. It's starting to look like a saw. I have to find a bar for it. I'll show you why. Then there's this guy. Now... That goes in there, so you can't put this on until you have the, a chain on and a bar. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to put it on anyway because we want to make sure that we have everything where we need it. Slowly getting there, and I'm going to tie this off. It's got a little washer here. Let's see. I've got a few things to do. Uh, I've got a piece that I don't know what the hell is for. But we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, that's working. I lubed up in there good and cleaned it out again. Okay, so we're getting something there. Now, there is this goes down into here and now we can put this on now I don't know what this 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 is I don't know if this is a spring of some kind where it might have gone see the other little saw that I have the automatic oiler or whatever it's not working and uh, since you have to kind of manually lube your chain yeah don't yank my chain. All right, that's on. Right, we'll be back in a minute. Much, much, much later. All right, guys, it's a will it run because we don't know. I've never seen it run, and considering what, what the shape it was in. So, stop is down. Up should be. Okay, that's down. That's up. So that should be good. Then this is choke. And then that way is choke. And uh, is there a, a throttle? Yeah, you can hold the throttle open like that. Now, I don't know. It's never easy to. Oh. Yeah. Nothing. Maybe a little bit more choke. Well, considering 
Let's pour some fuel down it, considering it hasn't ever really run. Let's give it some fuel to work with. way to hold it. I guess that was all we got out of it, huh? This, this works. guys yeah yeah they. my ears are fractured it's loud 2.0 CIV it's a little pancake but it's pretty cool so the next step chain and, and a bar I mean this bar might be okay if we clean it up but the chain doesn't look so good it's 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 locked in some areas and you know you can't use that now if I let it soak, it's actually not a bad chain, but we'll see. Got a blade break on it. It's a little pancake. It's really neat, and I have a case for it, which uh, the, hinge, the plastic hinge is breaking a little bit, but we could get to that later. Let me take it to the next level. All right, so that other bar and chain didn't fit. So I just spent some time trying to get this thing to move again. It's actually, it was in good shape. It seems to be okay now. We can always get another one, but we're going to be able to cut with it tomorrow if I finish this up tonight. Um, the bar is not too bad, but we're going to run a file. Anytime you have 
if you feel it, if you feel a little bit of an edge, he has a burr here. We gotta get that off, right? So we gotta get a bastard file, and we're gonna file that. All right, we'll be right back. Later that same evening. So we're just gonna pass a file over it. We'll clean up the top. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then we're gonna come this way. We're gonna come flat first, because we wanna make sure there's no issues that way. And then put it on a slight angle. Okay, and just feel it. Okay, and that's all you gotta do, guys. I'm gonna do both sides. And this side up and down or all around the sides and then we'll clean it off and then we'll put it on Okay, guys, we're just gonna sharpen up the blade and I put it on I just ran it real quick Start it right up you know, a few pulls that clip that that wire thing. This is the pump It all it is is I'll, get, I'll give you a better look at it But all it does is kind of go into the handle so I had to take the front the whole front off just the two bolts I did it when I took put the dot with the bar and everything, replaced the bar and the chain. And it's just a way for your thumb to, you know, press the, the oiler down. The chain was sharp, but there's some damage to it from because it was this thing was sitting in water. It was laying in its case, and its case was laying in the water, and the case is filled up still with water. We're gonna have to start off with dressing the top a little bit. Good bastard file. We're gonna flatten the tops on these. As I can tell you right now, they got rounded somehow. I don't know if it was just the water. So we got a good file for that, right? It's a small bastard. We're just gonna dress the top. It's not a big chain. There we go. Alright, now we're gonna come in underneath. I'm going to use a bigger one just for a few little passes. And I'll have to go back and forth a little bit. Chain's a little loose still. All right, we're going to run it with the oil. Uh, we'll get it a little tighter as we go. All right, that's much better. I can see it. Now we're going to come in tighter. Yeah, should be a little tighter. And... I think that's it. Yeah. And you can feel it. You know, it should feel sharp. It could be a little sharper, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Everybody says, don't keep going back and forth. Yeah, I know. It wears the file out. Yeah, I know. Okay, I, I can tie it. I'm cranky and, you know, play 4th of July and I'm working on my saw. Because that's my life. That's not when you get old. At least I have this to do. I'm very happy. I'm usually not like this. I think he hit a rock or something. Plunging it into the dirt. See, there's a little bit of damage. We just want to clean it up. That's good. This is just to really get in there tighter because it forces itself in. It gets in the bottom more. It gets the bottom of the of the raker. Watch your angle. This isn't that good. We damaged this. But there's a lot of meat on it though. Try to come up this way. Get up underneath that raker. Now we're just going to be doing some pruning with this. Oh yeah. All right. You guys get the idea. We'll be back in a little bit. And so far, this this you know little mini Mac, is in good shape. Okay. So I'm quite happy with it. Thanks, Mike. I have a couple of small saws. I have a, a lot of saws actually, considering I don't really use them. But you know, this is what I like to do. And I like to keep a few machines for myself. Can always sell them another day. All right, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, this one uses this type of screen. And you'd be surprised. I didn't show you, but there was a lot of junk clogged in it. You can see some of the little pieces remaining. Um, but what we're going to do, I'm going to see if I can put an additional filter over it. 
uh, just to keep the extra junk out. Not that I'm going to use it all that much, but I think it's a good thing. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Let's see how it works. The next day, the Colic 110, the Mac 110. Sharpened, oiled, lubed, gassed up, you know, ready to go. A little automotive clear coat on that just to protect it, you know, because it's mine. We'll test it in a little bit. It's too hot now. Chain is not bad, but needs to be run a little bit more. I'm keeping it a little loose. <clears throat> um, I put some used motor oil in here. Hopefully it feels like it's starting to, to work, but we'll see it drip, I guess. And that'll, that should flush it out. It's clean, it's filtered, it's, it's okay. All right, it'll splash a little bit, but that's fine. It'll work its way into this old chain. And then we'll wipe the saw down when we're done. <clears throat> And uh, I don't know, I'm gonna go drill the case and let some of the water out. We'll be back for a test. All right, guys, I figured I'd show you. So this is the other saw. Older Craftsman, no, no blade stop or anything, no blade break. Just a nice little Craftsman saw. And I might try this one again tonight. Uh, we're gonna test the little Mac 110 in, in a few. And this is the case that came with it. I cleaned it up. The, this is a little broken, but it's not bad. And it does have a blade gu uh, guard on it, cover. Fits real nice. I think I'm just going to bungee it for now. And then maybe I'll... F I, I'm sure I have hinges around. We'll screw some hinges in. But once, once it's all on and down, you know, I have a nice little carrying case for it. So let's go test it. It fits perfect in here. And uh, what more can you ask for, you know? All right, let's go fool around. a new, new chain okay but it's running good and it's running a little hot uh, on the chain I can see it it's a little bluing down there on the bottom so we're gonna have to do something about that and it's because the chain is old so we could try giving it another sharpening but also somebody put too, such a rake on the, the, the rakers that I think that's one of the problems let me get the other one and, and fool with that one next. Okay, let's try the Sears. Now this one, the chain is in much better shape. Uh, this was hard to start, whereas the other one's very easy to start. And there's no safety. It, but it, it's well balanced it cuts well I kind of like this a little bit more than the other one why I don't know yet uh, 
This one also needs to have the chain adjusted and it doesn't have, the automatic oiler is not working. Okay, so we need to adjust the chain uh, since I just used it and we're gonna lubricate it and then we'll, we'll finish up, all right? But yeah, I could tell you it's, it, needs, it needs lubricant. It's not working. Okay guys, last look at the saw. It ran pretty good. The blade is shot. Um, so I'm going to order another blade for it, but we proved the saw out and it works pretty good um, I don't know what happened to the other one. I'm not really sure The only thing I see here is just this label here is a little, you know, we'll stick the label back down But this thing this thing worked really good um, Very happy with it You know from literally just in the trash Absolutely a mess and I, like I said I wish I had the pictures of it uh, But I, I just I got busy uh, but we were able to rescue this from sitting in water. This thing was full of water. I drilled it and, and let it sit out in the sun and empty out. It's a little broken here, but, you know, I'll put a bungee on it. And, uh, and that'll be that. And at least it can be stored and it'll keep, you know, safe and dry and clean. And shop crap won't get in it any more than the junk. So I can store it like that someplace. And you just got to be careful when you pick up the handle. We don't want to drop that. Uh, but on to the next one, guys. I'm really happy with this saw. And we're going to do something else very shortly. I'm not sure what video I'm going to put up next, but this thing was a success and it was difficult to do. But other than the chain, uh, she's just a really nice thing to have. We'll be back. Like and subscribe, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a little long, but it was, a, it was actually a tough re uh, restoration, you know, or restification. We'll see you on the next one.